Leroy's Gardens and we're doing something a little bit different, something we normally don't do, but it's a really fun challenge and I'm excited. You can come in closer if you want. We're going to look at some pools. And basically what we did is we designed this garden and then because it was such a custom uh, garden bed situation, we decided to also build them. And also, as everyone knows, you can't find anybody to do anything in the construction or green world right now because everybody's book solid. So we put this into our schedule and it's actually been a really fun challenge. Um, basically what we did, if you want to look over here, is this is a round raised bed garden space that will have a bird bath or some kind of a water feature in the center. And it is that lovely dog is going to bark the whole time, just so you know. Um, but basically the, the interesting part about this is that two beds are low, two beds are medium, and then two beds are full 24 inch height. And the reason that we did this is because there is an Airbnb right beside us and they wanted the view from that Airbnb to be this lovely garden space. And so not only did we do the perimeter and all of this, um, which will eventually grow up and be really lush and beautiful space to hang out. So basically when you're building garden beds, not only do you need to figure out what shape, obviously the easiest shape is a rectangle or a square. Um, these are a flat nosed triangle to fit into a circle that turned out to not be a circle. Uh, so that made things a little bit more difficult. But the kind of tools that you would need for that, if you want to come up here close and we'll just talk about each tool, you absolutely need a saw. Um, you're gonna need a chop saw. Otherwise you're gonna do everything by hand on a hand miter saw. And you need a table saw, which is over there. And then the small tools that you're gonna need, good pairs of gloves, keep your hands safe. You're gonna need some kind of a little saw. If you don't have a sawzall, this is a great, uh, choice just because this uh, can be changed out really easily it's on a magnet system but it can also be folded up and kept away so this is like if you cut through something but you still have like a little piece and you can just get it off with something like this you're gonna need some kind of a square so you can make straight lines and um, squares square lines you're gonna need different kinds of screws so this this particular project actually ended up needing some kind of or a, a three inch screw for construction and holding it together. Then we needed um, a two inch screw. And I use the star heads because those just last longer. They don't um, uh, tear out as quickly as a Phillips head. And I just really prefer them if you're gonna pick something. And then we have some other you know, smaller type screws for different little, little things that we had to do. Also, because we decided to use some old fence pickets as more of a decorative part of it, we had to use a nail gun, a compressor, and um, two inch nails for that. Uh, the next thing we're gonna be in, ended up doing at the very end is sealing only the top edge. Because it is outdoors, weather is going to happen. This was a mixture of old wood and new wood um, from a old fence, from a garage roof that got torn down, several other things. And we just wanted to utilize all of that wood so that um, it didn't go to waste. And so then we're just gonna seal the very top edges so that when it does rain or sprinklers hit it, it has you know some time to cure um, rather than immediately getting wet and splitting or warping um, and we told the homeowner that if they want to keep it nice that they need to do this every year preferably even like every fall and then check it again in the spring the other thing you're going to need is a tape measure always a tape measure um, make sure that um, when you when you buy a tape measure make one buy one that fits in your hand buy one that's comfortable I particularly like this one and this brand. I use this space with my pencil to write measurements on because sometimes people are talking to me or whatever and I, I have to walk away. And so then if I have a little list of measurements here, it, it also wipes off really easily. Also, it has a good lock on it that's really easy to use, you know, when you've got gloves on. And then it has nice wide, um, wide blade with really easy read numbers. And this one's about, it feels like it might be in a tear right here. Remember that you, if once a tape measure is damaged, just throw it away. Um, there's no way to fix it. If they're very dangerous, if you catch your hand on that, um, it will tear your hand or anything else that it, when it's you know coming back really fast. So tape measures, you know, take care of them. Don't bend them too much, um, and then they then they will keep that rigidity so that you can do this kind of thing when you're measuring and it holds its strength. Once you get too many crink, um, crinkles in it or bends in it, there's another one right there that's where it's like weak and it will fail it's also where it will split so 
Um, take good care of your tape measures. Wipe them off regularly, especially if you're using them for outdoor type, type things. Um, the next things we have over here, I just wanna talk about the wood, is, uh, you can just come stand right here. This is the types of woods that we used. We used um, these old fence pickets. A fence had been taken apart. We used the table saw to tear them down. If we had to make them thinner, they were, you know, a full, I think eight inches. These were pretty wide ones, you know, older fence. We used two by fours. And when we went to the lumber yard, um, because we knew this was like a garden box situation and nobody was ever gonna see this wood, um, we actually took the ugly stuff. There's no sense um, buying the most beautiful or the straightest or the things without knots for garden beds. Like leave that for somebody that needs it to look nice. I've always um, been of that mind to just, you know, when I when I order it from them, I say, hey, you can give me the ugly ones. They're, they're for the internal parts of a garden bed anyway. So they always appreciate that. Um, the next thing we did is that we did buy some one by fours. And again, I told them the same thing. They didn't have to be beautiful or, you know, perfectly straight because we were gonna make them that way anyway. But I also, there was some, this um, client had a bunch of, a pile of wood. And so we also made a bunch of one by fours um, from her older wood as well. But we had to supplement a little bit from new wood. So let's just walk over and we'll look at the actual garden beds and what we chose to do. So in this situation, you can see, this is obviously old wood. These were two by sixes that we ripped down. Um, this is the old picket wood. This is new wood. It's not going to match. It's definitely more of a rustic, um, you know, garden bed look. And then we used old tin that was from a shed roof. And that's what we're doing right now is we're cutting that tin. We're getting it ready for, um, to go on the inside of these beds. Now I've used minimal screws. The types of screws you use will just come in. You can just uh, zero in on it. it is a hex head, um, self tapping metal screw. And so when you're using your drill and your drill bit, you are, you know, putting in there and you're pressing really hard and eventually pops through this and goes into the wood and it holds really nicely. We're not using a ton of them because obviously you're going to have the pressure of the soil against the back of this. So we don't need to waste materials by putting a screw every, you know, six inches or anything like that because it's all going to be, gravity is going to hold it in place and pressure. So we, you know, filled the inside of these with that. And we've just tried to really be um, as sustainable and like, and efficient with our material use on this project because the client really wanted us to use a bunch of materials that they had from something that had been dismantled. It's a great way to use it. It doesn't go to the landfill that way. And um, it's gonna be a beautiful garden. Over here, these were more of the, um, the ups upcycled or recycled woods that were from the roof of the garage that she had torn down. And so we, we cut that to size and we built these you know, eight inch beds then the next two go up to 18 inches, and then the final two go up to um, the full uh, 24 inches. And so these obviously you would stand up. This is, you know, if you want reference for like what kind of, or how high of a bed do I want. Um, this is the most uh, comfortable and probably the easiest to do things as you get older and older. And you don't even have to be older. This is just easier. Uh, the issue with this is obviously then you have to put your sprinklers in you know and uh, amend them so that they can come up on the top like this will come up and tee and be a drip system in all of these beds but as you can see if i was working in this garden space it's very easy to just stand here and get my things this height is convenient because you can sit and you can do whatever you need to do to get your things and obviously the lowest one you're going to be on your knees so you can you know decide what height garden bed you want based on you know, how young is your back? How much do you want to crawl around? You know, that's how I kind of think of things. So I'm going to grab some gloves and then we're going to talk about how to cut tin if you have, um, if you want to do some kind of a project like this. So basically, use a really good set of gloves. Um, don't use something that's too thin. Uh, I usually use leather ones or really, really um, uh, thick, like, not Nairo, but I think they're bamboo is what they're, it's like woven bamboo and then they're covered with rubber because if, if you're going to get cut, it's going to be, it's going to be bad with tin because you are making a razor edge. What's that? Oh yeah. Paul has an owie from the tin. <laughs> yep. It's going to get you and that got him through the gloves. So, so basically there's a technique to use. Make sure you're going to use tin snips. There's all different kinds. This is a long, you know, straight, straight cut tin snip. This is more for, you know, short, 
making shapes, that kind of thing, make sure they're sharp. We get these sharpened every single year because if you don't, then you're mis it's miserable and you're, you know, you're having to, you already have to work really hard to cut this, um, but you definitely want to have a sharp tool. So I'm going to do try out both and see which one I like better, like which one feels the best in my hand. And so we've already made the marks on here and we're just going to, I'm just going to start this and Paul's going to zero in on this and you basically just have to get it started and one side. So now that one, see how this one is because it's short, it wants to keep turning and doing this. So I'm going to switch and see how I like these and there's little um, places to get some good leverage on your, with your hands. So make sure and use that. You never want to be holding them up here and you don't want to be holding them clear back here. They've, they've made them ergonomically so that they're the best place in your hand and they do open pretty wide so if you have small hands they're gonna get more tired but the reason they do that is because you need the torque and the leverage to be able to cut metal so basically the easiest way that I have found is you're gonna put your foot very gently on one side of the metal and you're gonna pull up on the other side of the metal and this keeps it from cutting your hands and you're gonna follow your line so as I'm doing it, stand up because I want to keep this out of the way and I want to keep that now. Because if you're trying to cut it like this, what, look what's happening. You're running this along your hands and you're never, be, you absolutely will get cut. So you want to keep your hands out of the way and then make sure that, you know, this is coming up towards my face. Make sure that you don't poke yourself in the face with it either or, you know, lean down too quickly and poke yourself in the eye. And so as I'm moving along, I'm not putting any weight on this. I'm just holding it down. Otherwise, I would um, dent it, and I don't want to do that. And I'll cut it. And, ooh, it takes a lot of hand strength. You have to take a break every few pieces. Or if, you could, if you're ambidextrous, you can switch your hands. Anyway, so there's your piece. So we're going to keep cutting these, or Paul's going to keep cutting these, and I'm going to show you how we screw these together. So we're going to come right over here. How much time we got left? Okay, about 15 minutes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to work on this one. If you want to, you can come right in here if you want. Can you get a good shot? So now, something to consider when you're designing something from the beginning is consider the, um, the complete widths and lengths of your material because at the very beginning you have the ability to design it so that you use your material to its optimal right so that you don't have a bunch of waste you don't have a bunch of little pieces and so then for instance like like a eight foot piece of um two by four if you design your bed to be three feet by five feet by three feet by five feet that's two two by fours completed and then you don't have little chunks um, now, if you're going to do something more creative like this, it's a little bit harder because we had like increments, right? But we, we, we tried our best to just utilize and um, make as little waste as possible. The thing I didn't consider was the, the full size of the metal. So then what, what's going to end up happening as I, as I start this, you might be able to get behind me, or like right here over my shoulder, is that now I have to think about, because this is all used, it has you know, paint and has um, rips, you know, from former screws going in, that kind of thing. Because I didn't think about, oh, um, what is the full width of this? I could have made it so that either the bed fit to be just two pieces or it was a little bit longer so that the three pieces um, were spread out a little bit more. Um, this is obviously after the fact, so I just have to go with what I got. So basically what I'm gonna start with, because of how this is, is I'm gonna pick a side I'm choosing to put the, the more aged side out and flipping it over. It also, what that does is these old screw holes now, the little sharp edges are pointing inward. If you're doing this for somebody else or you're doing it for yourself, remember if you, put, um, if you did make something sharp, that somebody, if you were digging, nobody's gonna be really digging this deep down in here, is to just remember that those are down there or put a piece of duct tape over them or something like that so that nobody shoves their hand down in something and later gets hurt. Think of all those safety things because they really do matter. So basically we have a driver with a certain bit on it that fits this little hex head. 
they put the hex in and the hex set also has a washer um, with a rubber washer on it and that's that's for if you were making if you were using it as roofing material um, that's so that it stays waterproof obviously it doesn't really matter in this application so we're just going to start with it clear on the side and we're going to get that in place all the way across and then because I have to put a middle piece in I'm not going to put one over here yet, right? Because I have to put that other center piece in and then we can just use one screw to hold both of them. So I'm going to put one in at the bottom. And then I'm going to put this one over here really quick. And again, I just want to look at this and go, okay, this is kind of a scary little cut edge right there. So I'm going to put that all the way in the corner. So now I'm trying to keep all the same, like more uh, patinaed edges outward so that they all match. I put that in there like that. And see how I'm going to match it. And then these will fit. The ridges will match. Sorry, my voice is probably not hearing. See now how these ridges match, and then I'm going to screw it right there and that will hold that all in place. And I will also put one in the middle. Change your gloves to something else once you're not cutting the metal, just because those are more cumbersome for me anyway. Like that. And like that. And then remember, we're gonna, we're gonna completely fill this with soil. So that soil is gonna press against this. Um, and, and don't worry about small holes. I am gonna, I have some Gorilla tape and I am gonna go through and put some Gorilla Tape over these. I'm gonna hit them a little bit with a hammer, put some Gorilla Tape. Um, the only thing that would happen is maybe the water would seep out if something got over watered. Otherwise, small holes and cracks aren't gonna matter once the soil gets compacted and root systems start growing in here. Um, this is a perfect place for a raised bed because it has nice east to west um, sun coverage coming up and over. So then the beds at the back will um, they, there's a really large tree right here, but the beds at the back will shade these lower beds in the late evening and um, so that they can get a little respite from the sun. And then you want to plant these beds according to that sun. So like the bed behind Paul is going to have maybe taller things in it like herbs or flowers that you can cut or whatever. And then this is going to be your mid height things like cauliflower or broccoli or um, things that get kale that get a little bit taller and then the, the tallest beds I would use I would do the, the lowest things like your lettuces and your er, you know the small herbs like basil and that kind of thing and that's how I would plant these um, obviously if you're gonna be doing things nightshades like peppers tomatoes potatoes those do have to be rotated every year just because of pests coming and finding them and they can literally be rotated from one bed to the next um, but the advantage with something like this is that you can screw a trellis into this and grow tomatoes up, grow cucumbers up, and really utilize the space and use a method called square foot gardening. It's really good for um, getting maximum amount of production out of like a smaller space. Because obviously if this garden had just been planted right on the ground, um, you know, technically there's more space, but you still have to have pathways. But um, this definitely makes it more fun, more unique, more creative, and we just love it. So thank you so much for coming and watching. And um, we just, we're so thankful that we can share our knowledge of gardening. And if you ever have any questions, go to bewise.com, bewisegardens.com, um, or you can always join us at Bewise Plant Society on Mighty Networks, or you can send us a DM with a question. We're just thankful. And thank you so much to Argos for doing this and see you next time.